So you know how on some projects you procrastinate forever and then when you finally get it done, you think to yourself, why didn't I just do that right away? That was easy. This is not one of those projects. With the help of some family, we replaced our carpet with luxury vinyl tile about four years ago. The process itself went well, but I've been procrastinating on doing something with this step down into the living room ever since. The main issue here is that the step down is about a quarter inch lower than the top of the flooring. I just didn't really want to cover up that transition with a tripping hazard. But now I've got a little more motivation because the piece that was right here has broken off. I think the problem was that this little support piece underneath was lower than the rest. And so it eventually was able to flex enough and break at a grain line on the wood. So now's the time to fix this. We're gonna start by ripping off the old step. Look how far down this piece is. No wonder it was flexing so much. Whew. That's a big spider right there. Next, I need to trim these floor tiles to better match the future curve I want out of this piece. So I'm gonna use a bendy ruler and trace a new line. And then I'll use a Dremel with a cutting wheel to slice that off. As you can see, there's a bit of a depth difference between the face of this board and the face of this curvy one. And so I'm gonna fill that in with a chunk of wood. It's gonna be a little bit tricky because the top depth is 0.101 and the bottom depth is 0.252. So I guess I gotta take a chunk of wood and make it match that profile. You can hold it, but be very careful with it, okay? I'm gonna set this here. No, I need it. We're gonna take this piece and glue it and hammer it on. Can I have that? You can help me glue it. Okay. That should be good. We'll put this piece like this, and then we'll put some nails in. This one? And that one's too big. Yes. What are you doing, Dad? I am tracing these gaps onto this board so I can cut this piece out and then glue those pieces onto here. and I'll drill a couple of relief holes in each of those pieces. And then we'll glue and nail those two pieces down. Do this together, okay? Yeah. There. Mm. Done. And we'll try to nail down any loose plywood that has kind of popped up. 
time. So when we installed this floor, we weren't sure what we were gonna do with this edge. So you can see that the planks don't really line up flush with the edge. We didn't want them sticking out and catching on feet and such. So I've gotta pry off this trim over here and I've gotta slide the planks down so they're past the edge. And I'm basically just figuring out which plank I need to adjust and then walk it back on that plank so I don't adjust the wrong one. And now I'll use this oscillating tool to cut off the overhang of these planks. The blade's just gonna kinda ride the edge of the plywood underneath. Okay, I tested this downstairs and was getting better results, but here it must be different because I'm cutting into the wood underneath too, so maybe I'll have to do this with a router. That's a million percent better. Well, I've got this giant mess here. I might as well sand these pieces that I glued in earlier flush to the edge below. There's still some staples sticking out from the carpeting that used to be on this. So I'm gonna pull those out now. There's not enough board here to trim this one again, so I just spliced in a new piece. And normally you don't glue this stuff down, but I used some silicone to do so here to keep it from lifting up since there will be nothing holding it down otherwise. Before I can continue any further here, I need to make a template for the curve that I'm gonna cut both into the floor and for that piece that goes around the bend. So first I have to figure out how to measure the curve that exists in this step. Pretty close to a five inch, four and seven eighths, something like that. So now I need to take those measurements and translate them into Fusion 360, which is a 3D modeling program. A little too big. All right. I'm looking at this and this inside curve seems too small. I guess we're gonna just go with it, see how it looks in real life. I got my two pieces printed out. This one that's gonna go down on the floor needs some work because long story short, my 3D printer has trouble printing stuff on the outer edges of its printing area and I haven't fixed that yet. So instead of troubleshooting the printer, I just did some work and glued and screwed. I'm sure the 3D printing gods are not smiling upon this right now, but yeah, that's good enough, that'll work. And so now before I cut the actual pieces, I wanna test them out to see that everything's gonna work. So here's my test piece with about the same thickness of, uh, I don't know what this is, subfloor underneath, and then that same kind of luxury vinyl tile on top. So this is gonna go on here. And the trouble with this is that I can't clamp this down to the floor up there. And this is gonna slide around too much. First, I'm gonna try these glue dots. It's a little wiggly, which is not good. Maybe tape? I'm only cutting this spot up here, so I have this whole area to work with. I'll see. So there's a bearing on the top of this bit and that is the exact same size as the blade down below. And so that means that the bearing can ride on the 3D printed pattern and it'll cut that same pattern in the wood down below. Or at least that's the idea. Definitely want hearing protection for this. So part of the problem here is that my test piece is a little bit too short and so that ended up moving it, but probably wouldn't happen on a bigger piece. I think this is gonna work, let's just give it a try.
Okay, here we go. Okay. Can you take it off, Dad? Not yet. Just about done. Can you take them off? Yep, now you can take them off. Oh, do you want me to put this stuff on? The bottom of the plank is a little shallower than the top, so I'll glue a thin chunk of MDF in here to shim it out. I need to shim this piece too. This time I'll try tape. I can cut a space out from the middle for glue to stick to. So these riser boards look pretty good, right? And they match the planks. Well, big twist here, these boards were garbage. When I was a younger maker, I used to watch the free section of Craigslist quite a bit. That was all before I ran out of space. One day someone was giving away a whole kitchen worth of cabinet doors and drawer faces from an old 1950s or 60s model home. Really high quality stuff. They just wanted it gone. And this plywood is all from those drawer bottoms. My original plan was to install them, then sand them and refinish them with whatever color I needed, but these look perfect. I don't understand how I got so lucky, but I'll take it. Now to tackle the uneven floor. I realize now that I need this surface to be as flat as possible, but it's all over the place and it's different everywhere. So I'm gonna fill it in with floor leveling compound. And I made this tool to smooth it out using the vinyl plank surface as a reference. It didn't dry perfectly, so I'll have to smooth this out. And now I can finally start on the step itself. Did you step on lava? The black is a lava.
love. That's lava too. Yeah. So do not do that. It's your birthday, Dad. It's my birthday? Yeah. All right. How old am I? You're five. Oh. Well, happy birthday to you, Dad. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy birthday to you. You don't have to dance to your mom, but you can't. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Dad. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. years old. No, you're 100. I'm 100 years old. But don't ever use those because you're sharp. Okay. I'll make those up later. Okay. You see what I did here? Somehow I made this piece way too shallow. You can see the subfloor right at the top. I must have been thinking of the maximum depth on one of the straight sides, which still would have been wrong even if it actually covered the whole subsurface because it needs to stick out beyond the riser. Oh well, let's try this again. set up my router at an angle here to add a little bit of relief for the edge that touches the subfloor. Close. Now I need to cut 90 degree edges on this piece and it might have been easier to do that before cutting out the curves. But I made this jig for my Matias Design table saw sled. It locks into some T-slots I cut into the fences. And it worked pretty well. So try as I might, the flooring edge is not perfectly square, flat, straight, you name it. There will always be a gap between the floor side and the step side somewhere at this point. But I think I can get around that by adding a small gap everywhere between the two pieces. My original plan was to make some aluminum shims to make a uniform gap all the way around. <laughs> But Malcolm helped me realize I didn't really need them. There should be enough flex in the final piece to add that gap by eye. I'll creep up on the cut here. And I'll use my angle router table trick again here to make the edge of the step because I don't want quite a perfect 90 degree router chamfer here. I want it to be a little offset. 
Now I'll cut some slots for wooden dominoes. Normally you use a domino joiner for this, but those are very expensive and I don't have one. So I'm gonna try Wood Whisperer's router domino technique instead. Alexa, what's 23 divided by two? 23 divided by two is 11.5. I don't know how I do this. Fix that later. And that worked. All right, my longest clamp is too short. Maybe I can clamp a board to the table and wedge against it. This sort of works definitely better than nothing. My life-saving wedge clamp won't work on the other side. That length is too long, so there's no table to clamp a wedge board against. Let's see what Google suggests. Better than nothing. Thanks, Google. This clamp went way better than the other one. It's like a big boomerang. Well, I'll be. That's gonna work. The board is still a little proud of the vinyl plank at this point, so I'll make a mark here to know where to bring the step board down to. 
And despite my best efforts, I'm about a half inch short on this side of the board. I'm not remaking all of that. So let's see what we can do with glue and a chunk of wood. Now I can work on thinning this board out to that mark. With that edge down to the mark, I'll level out the rest of the surface. And sand down that front curved edge. For finishing, I can't do the final coat until it's installed upstairs, but I can do at least one coat of clear down here in the wood shop as kind of a base coat. What is that? This is the step. Okay. What are you doing? I'm gonna screw this down. Is it gonna be so loud? It'll be a little bit loud, it won't be too bad. I'll line it up with my old screw holes. Ready? Yep. Whoa! That was so cool! Yeah, it's a pretty neat tool, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So we'll get them all started. Yeah. And then we'll tighten them down. All right. All right, now it'll be a little bit louder. There. Let's test it out. Yeah, you can step on it, that's fine. But the nice. Thanks. <laughs> I'll use a plug cutter to make some plugs. Including dust it yourself. <laughs> the long game paid off. Now I need to recreate this color. So I was testing some finish. Clear coat is still a little bit too red. So I need to figure out some way to get some more yellow into this. So I picked up this woodworker's tint kit. So I'm going to give making my own stain a try. Thank <laughs> you. 
One coat of the colored stain will do it, but I want at least three coats total, so I'll do one more with just clear to finish it off for protection. Oh my goodness, your hair goes so fast. Dad. I can do that and you can take this, okay, Dad? I can do that and I got that thing. Okay. This one's tricky. Oh, got this one. Like a bandage to keep you safe. I got this part. That's glued. I can do that part. Okay. I want to wait for you, okay, Dad? Alright. Okay? Alright. Got it? Got it. Okay. Put it right in that pile. Where I said it. Okay. And we need this tape. And we're going on a lot of years ago. Woo! We did it! Nice work. There's a chunk taken out of the drywall here that was covered up previously, so I'll fill that in. And now to fill in that gap. After much research, I found this color seal sealant stuff. I thought it was gonna be like caulk and where you put it is where it's gonna stay, which is why I put all this tape down. But it's actually way more forgiving and you don't want to do the tape. It left a big edge and I just ended up rubbing it all down and it still looked awesome. It was perfect for this. Finally, the last step. I need to steam bend some cord around to cover the transition between the floor and the riser. So steam bending is super intimidating. Angles Coach Shop has a, a great video on all the reasons why steam bending fails. So I think I still might be able to pull this off. I'm gonna use Woodshop Junkie's PVC steam box method. This is not looking good so far. I can barely keep the steam box together. I mean, I can get it jammed in there, but A, yeah, it's cracking. All right, well. I'm done, I'm done with this. Post-mortem, I know why this failed. It's because I should have used just a rectangular piece of wood and bent that, and then cut the curve into it with the router afterward instead of trying to bend an actual piece of cord around. If you ever have to try this, just do it that way. In any case, I ended up buying this flex trim flexible cord around instead. It's some sort of plastic instead of wood, but it actually looks pretty good for what it is, I'd argue. Maybe I can replace it with real wood later? Well, maybe not, because we actually have moved. I'm actually in my new shop right now, big spoiler. It is a mess in here. Just ignore everything in the background. We enjoyed this step for about a year before we sold the house and moved out. This was so hard, but I'm able to sleep better at night knowing the new owners got a solid, trip hazard free step. And if they decide to completely replace it and throw that big boomerang away, well, hopefully the prep work I did will at least make it easier for them to install whatever floor they go with. There's more to come on the shop. Thanks for your patience while I handled all this move stuff. Thanks for watching.